Audiobook Academy. Book Summary. The Paul Street Boys. By Frank Molnar. The Paul Street Boys is a tale that speaks of the boyhood of a group of friends. They are trying to safeguard their play field from another group that wants to get rid of them. A little group of guys led by Boca and Nemechek have one thing in common and that is a playground where they spend their time together. The playground comprises of a plot of grass and several torn down buildings. Their playground was rented by a sawmill thus the location was crammed with wood, cut out to exact squares, and the wood was organized in a unique way so it formed a labyrinth for the boys to play in. Their playground was the nicest for them. The storehouse of woods was a little city, and the remainder of the playground symbolized the prayer. The tale opens in a classroom where a note is passed from one boy to another. The note said gathering at three. After class the lads ran out of school and Nemechek couldn't wait to tell the rest of the group that the twins from the rival group Red Shirts grabbed all the marbles from the boys who were playing in the Paul Street. The boys were appalled by the twins act and even the comm commander Boko felt that their behavior is awful. The first boy who arrived to the meeting was Nemechek and that was a part of his duty because the group was organized like a military. Nemechek was incredibly little hence he was merely an ordinary soldier unlike most of the others. While he was walking between the piled up wood a dog attracted his notice since he was acting unusual. One of the mounds the lads were building a castle was where he was circling. In spite of his intuition that something was amiss, he decided to climb the fortress and was faced with a nasty surprise. Ats, the red shirt's leader, was in attendance. When they noticed their red and green flag was missing, Nemechek's companions believe his narrative that he had run away out of fear. A war declaration for them. It was determined that a president would be elected to command the military effort and safeguard their national interests. Following his victory, Boca went to the botanical garden to confront the red shirts and show them that he was just as tough as they were. Two of the strongest lads would travel to the enemy's camp and post a sign reading, the boys from Paul Street were here. They devised a strategy. Everyone was blown away with the concept. Red Shirt Camp was located on a small island that Nemechek and another kid are assigned to investigate. To get to the island, they couldn't use a bridge because it was under guard, so they had to take a boat there instead. Nemechek slipped and fell into the water while they were getting into the boat. There was a start to the difficulties. At the enemy's camp, Boka and Nemechek found one of their own, Jerev, instructing Ats on the most straightforward method of breaking into their playground. That betrayal broke Nemechek's heart, and he burst into tears. As soon as the red shirts escaped, they set up their sign. They had to flee as soon as they saw the sign, which was quickly discovered. They were safe once they hopped over the barrier. After the next day's class, the professor summoned a few young men to his office to speak privately with him. Group for Putty Gathering was the name given to a group of them who all lived on Paul Street. Upon asking them a series of questions, they revealed to him how they collect putty. Stamp Group for Putty Gathering, Budapest. 1889 was found in the professor's cabinet. After Nemechek retrieved some putty from the window during questioning, the group's reputation was preserved. It was during this group meeting that Nemechek learned that the group trader Jerab had snuck into the guard's office and bribed him with cigarettes so that the youngsters would flee from his sight. In a rush, Nemechek failed to tell Boka about it, and he regrets it. The other boys in the gang branded him a traitor and expelled him. It wasn't until two days later that the red shirts had plotted their retribution. Atz was enraged since he was aware that the guard had been bribed with cigarettes. He was adamant about not engaging in any unethical behavior. Atz was astonished by Nemechek's courage when he jumped from the tree he was hiding on during the Red Shirts meeting. But Nemechek refused to join him, even after he offered. In spite of Atz's belief that Nemechek was too frail to be hit, he gave the order to the other boys to submerge Nemechek in the lake. The previous time Nemechek had a bath in the lake, he felt a little under the weather. He was allowed to leave because of Nemechek's message about honesty and trust even though he was sick and wet. It was the next day when the boys noticed a message from their president, Attention. From now on, we need to watch our back. Our country is in peril and if we don't act with caution, we will lose our playground to the red shirts. A few days before, the lads began preparing for an impending attack. They pay attention to their president despite their disbelief that everything is occurring so quickly. The guys in Boca's putty collection gang objected to Nemechek being selected as his sidekick. That's why he got kicked out of the gang and labeled a traitor, according to Nemechek. In the midst of preparing their sand bombs, fortresses, and other weapons, the group's traitor Jareb emerged and apologized for revealing their playground to the red shirts. After saying no, Boca's father urged Nemechek to show him evidence of his son's disloyalty. 
Nemechek told Jareb's father that he wasn't a traitor before Boca chose to take him home. Nemechek's condition was deteriorating rapidly, and he began hallucinating as a result. When he saw how sick he was, Boca burst into tears. Because of his loyalty, Jules Verne's father had given Jareb one of his favorite books, which he had read many times. He gave Nemechek the book as a token of appreciation. After learning that Nemechek was sick, the red shirts postponed their attack until he was better. While they were talking, Jareb overheard and divulged everything he knew to Boca's crew. It was agreed that Jareb was not lying, and he was accepted back into the group. There are red shirt messengers at the playground who come to declare war and spell out the laws of the fight. Nemechek went to his residence and apologized for what they had done to him after that. The conflict got underway exactly as the Paul Street gang had predicted. As a result of the attack, the Paul Street boys were forced to confine him to an even smaller structure. Atz, the leader of the other half of the Red Shirts, decided to disregard the regulations, and a major brawl ensued. Even though Atz had reached the shack, Nemechek had emerged and prevented him from freeing the youngsters. He fainted after kicking Atz to the ground. The Red Shirts were chased away by the Paul Street guys who unleashed a torrent of mayhem. A voice in his head informed him it was his job to help his buddies, so they lifted up Nemechek from the ground and helped him up. When Nemechek's mother came to pick him up, Boka feared the worst for him. Atz came to apologize to Boka since he felt bad about everything. Boka paid a visit to Nemechek and informed him of his repentance and the putty gathering group's decision to accept him back. Everyone was devastated to learn that Nemechek would not be able to return home. Before he found solace, he was in a state of coma. Immediately following Boca's death, he made his way to the playground they had battled so hard for. Because he planned to build a structure in the area, he observed an engineer out in the field. Boca came to the realization that it was all for naught and understood for the first time what life is really all about. Small and frail, Ernest Nemechek had blonde hair. To him, the most important thing was to be noticed. The other lads taunted him mercilessly because of his thinness and frailty. His father was a tailor, and he came from a humble background. Except for him, everyone else in the formal military unit knew exactly what they were supposed to be doing. It's safe to say he was a regular soldier in the army. He was content even if he had to kneel down to someone. Because of this, he was always ready to defend their playground, despite his own frailty. The boys were brought together by his death, which was a sacrifice he made. Boca, the leader of the Paul Street Boys, was known as General Boca. He was fearless, courageous, honest, and wise. He was described as a young man who appeared to be older than he actually is by the author. When he spoke, he sounded much older than he was. When Nemechek died, he started crying because he was so sensitive and surprised. Atz, the Red Shirt's chief of staff. However, Paul Street Boy's adversary did not treat him with any animosity. He was a man of great strength and a certain amount of knightly bravery. He looked good in the Red Shirt. He was deeply concerned about Nemechek. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button for more content like this. See you in next video.